safe chance here. Of course, I mean, look, it's a, it's a tools race at the end of the day. And it only does take one shot, but, you know, we, we do have them question marks over Andy Crawler's power. You know, can he get that one big punch that it probably needed to be able to stop Lomachenko in his tracks? But look, when it comes to belief with both Corolla and his coach Joe Gallagher, there's plenty of it. And I, I'm, I'm really, really keeping everything crossed that he can pull it off. It's 44 on his back, the 44 professional appearance. But this crowd is going to go wild for Loma. Yep, they certainly are. We're watching a superstar in Lomachenko and a, and a pound for pound star and a future Hall of Famer. And um, yeah, really expecting big things here. You can hear the Anthony Crawler theme from the traveling Brits. But it is the Ukrainian who the Americans flock to see. And here he is. Without question, one of the standout fighting talents of the modern generation. The obscenely gifted Odessa Southpaw, Vasil Lomachenko, who incredibly triumphed in 396 of 397 amateur bouts, European, world, Olympic, golden doubles, you name it, Loma collected. And after just 13 fights as a professional, he's already a three-weight king and surely, surely destined for Hall of Fame greatness. Absolutely. I mean, to do what he's done in, you know, only a dozen so fights it is incredible. I mean, I don't think we'll see another Lomachenko again to, to get an amateur record like he has. It's absolutely remarkable. You know, you look at the likes of Sugar Ray Robinson, uh, I think it was 85 amateur fights, no losses, and Trafelio Stevenson, well, he ranks probably higher for me. You know, he absolutely won the lot, and uh, as a pro, he's done everything as well, and he's just impressing me all the time. You know, he suffered that defeat to Toledo, but he's only got better, he's got stronger, and the, the class of opposition he's beaten has been fantastic, and yeah, he, he's a rare, rare talent. We were fortunate enough to be ringside at the Thomas and Mack for his professional debut when he knocked out Jose Ramirez in four rounds. And bar the blip, although it was his second fight challenging for a world title, quite extraordinary against Orlando Salido, beating the likes of Gary Russell Jr., Roman Martez, Nicholas Walters, who he embarrassed, Jason Souza, Rigondo, the lot, Jimmy Los Lennon. Angeles, California, as Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated presents the featured bout of the evening, brought to you by GEICO. This bout is sanctioned by the WBO president and supervisor in attendance, Francisco Valcarcel, along with the WBA president, Herberto Jesus Mendoza. Supervisor is Renzo Bagnariol. Introducing our three judges scoring this bout for Brinkside, we have Dr. Lou Moret, Dave Moretti, and uh, Patrick Morley. All right, fans. Here we go with the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the unified WBA and WBO lightweight championship of the world. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world on ESPN Plus, live from Los Angeles, it's showtime. Introducing to you first, the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring, wearing Laker purple and gold, and presented in association with Matchroom Boxing. Hailing from Manchester, England, he weighed in at 134.8 pounds. With a record of 34 wins, six losses, and three draws, he has 13 wins coming by way of knockout. He is currently ranked the WBA number one lightweight contender. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome boxing's respected pride of Manchester, the former WBA lightweight champion of the world, introducing Anthony Million Dollar. And his
his opponent across the ring, the defending champion fighting out of the red corner, also entering the ring wearing Laker purple and gold, hailing from Akurman, Ukraine. He weighed in at a ready 134.4 pounds with a record of 12 wins, one loss. He has nine wins coming by way of knockout. As a renowned two-time Olympic gold medalist and a three-division world champion, he is truly a pound-for-pound -pound star of boxing today. Tonight, making his 13th world title appearance, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former featherweight world champion, the former super featherweight world champion, and the current defending, reigning, and unified WBO and WBA lightweight champion of the world, Introducing Vasily Lomachenko! And introducing our referee in charge, now to give instructions, Jack Reese. Right here, Anthony. Anthony. Right here, brother. Yeah. Right here, right here is good. These are good if they creep up. I'm gonna still let them work in there. They're good. They're good. But if they creep up, Muppies, Muppies. All right, both your trunks are good. I just want to remind you: listen and obey my commands at all time. Protect yourself at all time. Fight hard. Fight clean. Good luck to both of you. What a storyboard for LA and both in the Lakers' gold and purple, the Golden State as boxing's golden Vasil or Vasily Lomachenko from Odessa in the Ukraine puts his WBA and WBO lightweight belts on the line, a chance to admire his ring beauty and a chance, however unlikely, for one of the biggest upsets for a British fighter on foreign soil as Anthony Crawler embarks on this so-called mission impossible how does he go about it he's been sparring with southpaws like frankie gavin and jazza dickens he's had it tough in camp but this is levels above this is one of the great fighters of the last 10 20 years in lomachenko who just seems to be getting stronger and better and he wants more yeah, he does, Adam. He's improving all the time, Lomachenko. Which is a problem for Corolla, but Corolla's got to expect the unexpected here. He's got to not get frustrated. You know, he's got to try different things out. He's got to have a game A, a game B, a game C. And I'm sure Joe Gallagher, who's a great tactician, would have worked on all these sort of things. And, um, yep, he's just got to see how he goes. He's got to go out there and enjoy this. Yeah, he's got an, an extremely tough task, but I think one of the keys will be to try and land some body shots. We've seen how good of a body punch a crawler is to try and slow Lomachenko down, but it's just trying to trying to land shots when Lomachenko's static. But, he, you know, he moves round you, he's got angles in abundance, and he's a great fighter. And uh... Already springing in and out. Beautiful footwork, Lomachenko, and he judges distance so perfectly, faints a great deal as well, and surprises you like a cat from all angles. The reflexes, terrific. Crawler with that high guard and knows he's going to have embarrassing moments in there, but they have worked on that through camp. And I think it's a matter of getting through the first three or four rounds and trying to utilize some of those body shots and if anyone, in any way, he could put some sort of pressure on Lomachenko because Salido did show the way that if you can out-hustle him and smother him, a bit like maybe Castillo did with Mayweather, you know, and just take the fight to him. It's whether Crawler's physically strong enough and whether he punches hard enough. Yeah, not really Crawler's style, unfortunately. Crawler likes to move around the ring, circulating around the perimeter of the ring, picking shots like that, the shots through the middle. I think for Crawler, I think his biggest opportunity here is Darren hit the nail on the head. He needs to switch the attacks to the body and try and slow the attacks of Lomachenko down because you're right, Adam, the timing is impeccable from Lomachenko. The way he moves his feet in and out is something that we've never never seen before and um it's special it's beautiful to watch crawler is a 
Good tactician, though, and has got plenty of skills. He had to to get to where he has, and he won that fight against Dowd Yordan to become the mandatory. Some people have said he doesn't deserve the chance. Disagree, did everything asked of him. Beat Ricky Burns as well. Now he's got to find a way of fathering out the massive puzzle in front of him. Good lad. All right, he might come a little bit more now. Joe Gallagher guiding Anthony Crawler through. He's a good man to have in the corner, isn't he? And he knows Anthony so well. Yeah, he certainly is. And he broke that down beautifully, if I'm honest. The, 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 the um, information that he was passing on to Crawler there was perfect. You know, he's got to stay tight. He's got to, you know, he's got to be, be careful of those body shots, those straight left hands through the middle. And he's got to try and counter punch Lomachenko as he comes in. But timing is the importance here. Second round for the former world featherweight, world super featherweight, and current and reigning world lightweight champion, Vasil Lomachenko. Fight number 14 for the 31-year-old, who was one of the most outstanding amateurs there has ever been. In with Anthony Crawler, decent amateur, but uh, has achieved more as a professional, has lost six times. Most worryingly, that uh, defeat at British level when he was stopped by Derry Matthews. But how he has rebuilt and learned from there. And it uh, shows how much a fighter can improve from roughness early on. That the loss to Yusuf Al Hamidi, the ice cream salesman and journeyman. You'd never believe he went from Yusuf Al Hamidi to Vasil Lomachenko. Well, look, it's what you take from defeat and what you learn from it. And Crawlers learn. Lots from his defeats, and um, it was uh, a privilege to watch him win that world title. But again, he's up against it here, and he's in a position now where I don't want to see him. I don't want to see him getting pushed back and backed up into the corner to allow Lomachenko to, to pick the shots. You've got nowhere to move, and you're on the ropes or in the corner. So he's got to try and double up his attacks, Crawler, try and push Lomachenko back and try and get him in the corner or on the ropes. But you know, it's a, a very difficult task when. You're fighting someone who has the foot movement and the foot speed that Lomachenko does. Yeah, Lomachenko's controlling this with his feet. Um, and I see what I see what Crawler's trying to do. He's trying to draw him in. We heard Gallagher saying try and get him on the right hook counter as he comes in, but that's that's easier said than done. Lomachenko's footwork is perfect at the moment. There was the body shot that Gallagher was talking about. That's what that's the, that was a sort of good sign there for Crawler. Yep, nice shot from Anthony Crawler there. And he's keeping his poise. But Lomachenko right in front of him, and he's not going to be worried about that as he goes through his routine. I see a lot more fainting as well from Krola. Try and get Lomachenko to lead. And try and counter him. This oh. is good work. The variation there. Body shots following up the uppercut. Lovely work. Sweet uppercut. And it followed the left hand a few seconds before that from Lomachenko. Finding the gaps now in the Crawler defense. And now Anthony Crawler's learning what it's like to be in with someone like Lomachenko. He wanted to test himself. And here begins the reality. How will he react? Yeah, Lomachenko's just pushing Crawler into each corner at the moment. It's not where he wants to be. Lomachenko with a couple of headshots and a body shot late on in the second. I think troubled Anthony Crawler just as he went back to his corner. Joe Gallagher kept everything uh, on the right lines. Paul Smith in there as well. Familiar faces to help Anthony Crawler. Lomachenko, as always, has his dad Anatoly in the corner with Igis Klimas and Ras Amber. It's a well oiled machine. Yeah. And a well-oiled fighter. 
Yep, not a bad start though from Crowley. You know, he's gone out there, kept nice and tight. He's not doing bad here. He's just trying to work a way out to figure Lomachenko out. He's trying to break through the guard, but Lomachenko is controlling all this at the moment just with his feet. Look at the movement in and out all the time. The distance is perfect. Oh, Goes up the set with the left hand. And again from Lomachenko. That's the wand that he utilizes the backhand from the southpaw stance. And now he's looking as though he wants a stoppage here. He's right on the front foot. And is there any chance of him looking past Crawler or not getting up for it? Not one little bit. That looks the complete opposite. It looks like he wants to make a real statement here. And you can see it. There's real spite in these shots. Look at that left hand. Beautiful shot. Crawler took it well. It's fantastic stuff by Lomachenko. Yep, shipping some big punishment here, Corolla. Those left hands through the middle and that body shot as well. The uppercut is really taking an effect now. He's been landing that from the opening bell and this is troublesome times here for Corolla. Really upping the tempo and Corolla tries to get back with a left hook of his own and he's springing on his own feet, Corolla, but he's under sustained pressure here and it's the skill set and the speed and as Darren said earlier, levels in boxing. And Crawler, a good former world champion. But at the moment, he looks like he's in with an absolute superstar. Absolutely. I mean, he's showing why he's regarded as pound for pound number one. Going through the gears, the variation, you know, the tempo. You know, he doesn't stay at one pace. And there's a lovely right uppercut there, picking the shots well. Crawler's got weathered this storm now. Get away from them ropes, try and work his way back to the centre of the ring. Yeah, the problem you got for Crawler is that Lomachenko is forcing him into each corner. He's using that footwork and now he's starting to unload with the clusters of punches and he's in trouble here, Crawler. Big shots, left hook really troubled him. Anthony Crawler and the referees are only having a close look. Back end of the third, he's going to have to throw something back, he can't. And he's giving him a count. The referee, a standing count. What's going on? Lomachenko thought it was all over. And the referee, Jack Rice, gave him a standing count. Well, all a little bit confusing in there, and the referees give him a lifeline there, giving him a standing count. I think everyone thought it was over. Well, the, he's saying the rope stopped him from going down, but it looked to me there were unanswered punches, and it looked like a stoppage, and certainly that's what Lomachenko believed. Absolutely, he jumped on the corner, celebrating there. Two members of the security, I think, jumped in the ring, but that was crazy. At first, I thought he'd given a standing count. Strange scenes. He's saying the ropes kept Crawler up. It'll be fascinating looking back because there were so many shots that went in there. It looked the timing to finish the fight and Lomachenko was certainly beginning the celebrations prematurely. Referee Jack Rice has let it go on, but Crawler was in massive trouble. Yeah, he was in terrible trouble there. Let's take a look at the action now. We see Crawley using the ropes, bouncing off the ropes, but the shots were getting through. They were going round the gloves. And the problem you've got is, if there's unanswered punches coming, the referee has got to stop it. Did the ropes keep him up, though? It didn't seem that way. It didn't see him touch down. It's just strange. Strange from the referee there. But the only chance or hope that Crawley's got now is that Lomachenko had punched himself out, but with someone of the... The fitness, the speed, and, and the experience of Lomachenko, I doubt that's the case, and he's come out all guns firing, all guns blazing in this round again. Oh, it's all too much, this, for Anthony Crawley. He's brave, he's defiant, as we knew he would be. But his eye, as well, is reddened, and the blistering array of Loma's arsenal is on full display. And a body shot as well here. And the referee might have to make a more serious decision, and that is to stop the fight or the corner. But Crawler is going to go out fighting, and he can't take it anymore. Down he goes inside the first minute of the fourth. That is definitively the end of the fight. And Vasil Lomachenko proves his utter class in dismantling the brave
Anthony Crawler, who needs some time here. The paramedics will be tending to him, and our concern is obviously with the wonderful Mancunian, who tried everything, but Lomachenko way, way, way too good, and he sat upright. Anthony Crawler, but he just was caught in the middle of a storm and I I wonder despite the confusion in the third round whether Actually the fight could have finished there. It was Very very brave of Crawler and he went back to his corner at the end of the third, but it was just more of the same and Vasil Lomachenko wanted the stoppage. He wanted it badly and Anthony Crawler tried it was fantastic that he took the opportunity, but he has learned, as so many have learned, quite how good this Lomachenko is. He's absolutely exceptional. Um, you know, he looks absolutely amazing there. He's done everything right, but I want to just, uh, you know, have two criticisms of the referee there. You know, I, I'm not sure what the count was all about at the end of the round, and I, I have no idea why he was counting when Crawler went down then, you know, you could see he was he was gone, you know, it was a bad knockdown, his face is on the floor, the ref starts counting, you know, the referees are in there to protect the boxer. And... Okay, so should, first question, should the referee have stopped it in the previous round? Yeah, I'm going to tell you now, the referee should have stopped in the previous round, he was unanswered punches, not just one or two unanswered, un unanswered punches, 20 odd unanswered punches, the referee's job is to stop the fight, Corolla was in trouble at the end of that round, he'd come out in the fourth round, obviously Joe Gallagher's going to let him out, he, he had a, a game plan to let Lomachenko come in and try and counter punch him with a hook, but that was unnecessary to go into that fourth round. I think the fight should have been stopped, and it was and that was bad to see that the crawler took that punishment, and that was a bad knockout. And he still looks unsteady sitting on that stool now. Well, the right hand to the temple and the power there. People are saying he can't punch much Lomachenko. Oh wow, he is absolutely brilliant. He really is, and I'm sure Anthony. The first and most important thing is that he recovers and recovers well because that was a nasty finish. But I'm sure he will be the first Down. to take his hat off to the extraordinary skills and accuracy of Vasil Lomachenko, who tonight was on a mission for a knockout. He was. He wanted to prove a point. He wanted to make a statement, and he did, uh, done just that. You know, it was clinical. The, the foot speed, the, the, the hand speed i mean the, the punch Three, variation four. was exceptional and you know he, he did really did make a statement there and is that what do you do next what does he do who does he fight i mean because i i just do not see him getting beat again yeah well there's unifications with commie of course if mikey garcia comes back to lightweight that's another possibility then could he go up to welterweight and that's a huge division with errol spence and terence crawford who has a fight with amir khan next week there's so many more options. Remember, he's an actual Ladies featherweight. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 58 fighter. seconds in round number four. He is the winner by way of knockout and still the unified WBO and WBA lightweight champion of the world, Vasily Lomachenko. Round of applause from Eddie Hearn. And I think we all uh, I will, I will. In awe of this guy, Spencer. As, as fight fans and commentators and former fighters, he's just so good. Yep, yeah, listen, we've just witnessed brilliance, and we said that before he stepped through the ropes. We've seen what he does. This this finish here was clinical. The right hook over the top landed high on the head of Crawler. No one no one does that to Anthony Crawler, and I think what he'd done there, what he demonstrated there, was an incredible performance. The referee was slow. He shouldn't have been counting there. The fight was over. When Crawler went down here, he was totally gone. The eyes were shut. This is where the referee, right now, look at his eyes. The referee should have pulled it over there. But there was no, there was no urgency from the referee whatsoever. You know, when, when a fighter hits the canvas with his head, you should be straight over there, calling in the medics and anything there. That your shoulder, the your right shoulder, wasn't 100%. Tonight, a one-punch knockout with that right shoulder. I guess it's feeling pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's a one-punch knockout. I want to say thank you very much, Michael Bisping, for giving me this chance. Thank you very much. 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 Th
uh, Alatraj, who make me my shoulder, and now I can come back 100%. Thank you very much. And of course, of course, thank you for all people, thank you for all fans who came to Staples Center support support this beautiful boxing. Thank you. Vasily, you talked about wanting historic fights, title fights. With that being said, what's the fight that you want next? I don't know. I wanna, I wanna fight with Mikey Garcia, but we'll see. I don't know. Unifying titles at this point is what's most important to you. Staying at 135. Yeah, yeah, of course. I, I stay 135. Uh, longer as it's, it's possible, and I want unificate for all titles. Sorry, my English is not good. Sorry. You're doing a great job. Congratulations on a spectacular knockout tonight. Thank you. Well, it's that sort of performance that might help turn him into a crossover star. Absolutely dramatic, and his English is getting better, and we love to watch him. And Anthony Crawler stuck with him as long as he could. First couple of rounds were one-sided, and then the third was dramatic. Talk us through this, boys, and, and the sort of the odd call for the knockdown and whether it, it should just have been done there and then. Well, I think he was just wor working his way into it, Lomachenko, and he was using his feet, putting Anthony Krull under um, amazing pressure right from the opening bell. Now, look, he landed a, a left hook there that, that made Krull's leg stiffen. Now, the fight should have been stopped here. He wasn't coming back. The referee jumped in. There it was over. I don't care what anyone says. That fight was over there and then. I think it was bad refereeing. He'd give him the count, but the writing was always on the wall, Darren, and, and, and the inevitable was going to happen. Absolutely. I mean, look, the end of that third round could have prevented this from happening and when it did happen I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit annoyed with with the lack of urgency from the referee but look I don't want to take anything away from Lomachenko that was punch perfect he made a real statement there he showed why he's arguably number one pound for pound fighter out there he, he's just got it all and you know the fight with Mikey Garcia really really does get the juices flowing I know he lost 